All right, we are going to talk about Earth's eras. Um, last time you guys learned a little bit about the Precambrian age and how we don't really have fossils or markers on um, what actually existed back then because it's just too old and so most of those things have been destroyed throughout time by just getting buried deeper and deeper and then eventually um, getting melted down and destroyed uh, by the temperature and pressure of being buried so deep. So now we're going to talk about Earth's eras uh, past the Precambrian. So the Phanerozoic Eon okay, is characterized by those three eras that we talked briefly about last time, and that's the Paleozoic Era. This is the oldest era, and it's divided into six periods. The Mesozoic Era, that's the middle. You can remember Mesozoic is middle, um, and it is divided into three periods. And the Cenozoic Era, that's the youngest era, the most recent. That's the one we are currently in, and it's divided into two periods. So the Paleozoic Era is... Um, from 100, or excuse me, 544 million years ago to about 245 million years ago. And it's separated, because it's such a long period of time, into three separate um, mini eras. The early Paleozoic era, the late Paleozoic, and the, or excuse me, the middle Paleozoic, and the late Paleozoic. So the early Paleozoic consists of the Cambrian and Ordovician periods. These are called the age of the invertebrates. Okay, so remember, invertebrates are things that don't have spines or bones. Um, and when these, um, the early Paleozoic era, or the age of the invertebrates were occurring, the continents were covered by large, shallow inland seas. And so there wasn't just one big ocean or anything like that. Uh, they just had very shallow seas all over. So there was very little land. Um, and so no life existed on land. Um, and as you recall, remember I said that each of these eras or each of these periods um, ends with a giant change in fossils, and that means usually some sort of extinction event. So uh, the no life existed on land, and when it was over, it ended with a mass extinction. So all of the invertebrates that uh, lived during this early Paleozoic, most of them went extinct at the end. And as we move into the Middle Paleozoic era, this is the Silurian and Devonian periods. This is actually the age of the fishes. So uh, the fish did not go extinct during our um, extinction event. And now they have become the rulers of the shallow inland seas. There are some invertebrates that live on land, such as cockroaches and dragonflies. Um, and continents um, begin colliding, forming mountain ranges. So if you remember from elementary school, the continents that you're standing on all move around, okay? They all move around, and so uh, two continents or several of the continents would crash into each other, and they formed these large mountain ranges, which forced land out of those shallow seas, and that's why we ended up getting some life on land, like these cockroaches and dragonflies. Then we moved into, uh, oops, oopsies, hold on one sec. Then we moved into the late Paleozoic, um, which consists of Carboniferous and Permian periods. This is when the amphibians began to arrive. So reptiles evolved from amphibians, which we'll see in a second. During the late Paleozoic era, uh, the continents began to collide and formed Pangaea. I'm sure you remember Pangaea from elementary school, but if you don't, it's the large supercontinent that existed during this time. Um, after the late Paleozoic era, there was a huge mass extinction, um, and people still aren't quite sure why it happened, but we know that it definitely happened, and there was a huge transition. So we went from the age of the amphibians, and that's what Pangaea looks like, if you don't remember. Look, these are all the current countries and how they would have lined up if we were still in Pangaea. And after we leave the uh, late Paleozoic era, we moved into the Mesozoic era. And the Mesozoic era goes from 245 million years ago to 65 million years ago. This is the age of the reptiles, and this is when the dinosaurs lived. So this contained the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous periods. This is where dinosaurs dominated, and we began to see the appearance of small mammals and birds. Flowering plants, uh, also called angiosperms, um, appeared. 
Pangaea separated into continents with large oceans beginning to form um, in between them. And they were mass extinctions from a large meteorite impact. Um, that's what scientists believe, and that's why they think that the dinosaurs went extinct. There's a few other uh, theories, you know, that are floating around out there. Um, all of them based somewhat in scientific evidence, and if you'd really like to, it'd be interesting to read up on them, because uh, they are all very interesting. So after the Mesozoic era, we went into the Cenozoic era. This is 65 million years ago to currently. Um, so early in, tertiary, in the tertiary period, India collided with Asia to form the Himalayas. Africa and Europe collided to form the Alps. The Cascades and Sierra Nevada began to form in North America. So these are huge mountain ranges. So as they began to crash together, we get these huge mountain ranges. We also started to evolve new grasses and flowering plants, and they dominated the land. Mammals continued to thrive and evolve in that um, environment. And Homo sapiens, or humans, began to um, evolve about 400,000 years ago. So we live in the Holocene epoch of the Quaternary period. So we'll look at that in a second. So here is the... So remember how I said all the fossils would be buried really deep? If we continued to dig down and dig down and dig down and dig down, these are the type of fossils that we may see, and this is how we get a good idea of what um, existed in that time. And you can see when there are giant extinctions because we went from animals that look like this to organisms that look like this and organisms that went, look like this into organisms that look like this. So it changes very drastically, and that's how we can tell when there was a giant extinction, and thus where we draw the boundaries between the different eras. Um, so yes, the Holocene is the most recent. That's where we are currently living, the Cenozoic Holocene um, period. And understand that down here is all of the Precambrian era, where there's very little... Um, fossil evidence. So this is kind of a rundown of what that might look like and the different types of fossils you might see. Now this is a rundown of the type of representative life that existed during those times. So during uh, the Paleo uh, excuse me, Paleocenic era, um, you can see the Cambrian or Devisian, all of these, okay, and then, excuse me, Paleozoic, and then the Mesozoic era are all of our dinosaurs, and then the Cenozoic era, we're going to start to see horses and all those things, including humans. So that's kind of how that works. Um, I hope this makes sense, and I hope you're kind of understanding. Uh, remember ways to remember the order of the Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic um, so that you can remember the order. All right, please write down any questions you have. Thank you.